so our work is around identifying what archetype describes what you're doing, and then we align that with the specifics of the organization to create their unique story, a story that's unique, compelling, and memorable that engages the audiences that they need to reach. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky, I'm your host. It's great to be back with you. I always love doing this show because I get the opportunity to spend some time having a bit of a laugh, but also sharing a lot of great content that will help you. It will help your book uh, writing, will help your business, and whatever venture you're in, because I'm speaking to people who have actually walked the road before you. So if you're an entrepreneur who's trying to get somewhere in business, this is the show to be on. Now, my next guest, uh, you're going to love the story that we're going to be talking about, because it's all about stories. Not like to welcome to the show, Paul Fariga. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks so much, Rick. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be on and I appreciate you having me. No, look, it's absolutely my pleasure. Now, just for context, I'll tell everybody that we're going to be talking about the art and power of storytelling and we're going to have a particular focus, Paul, on the what you call the capital S story. So that's very intriguing and why it's an organization's most valuable marketing asset. But before we do any of that, we need, need to know about your story. That is the format of the show, Paul. We, we always take, a, 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 I guess, a step left to center away from the business because I think fundamentally businesses um, don't change too much, but the people behind them absolutely do. So I'm wondering, uh, where are you calling in from today? I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the, in the United States. And that's home? Yes, indeed, it is home. Tell us a little bit about it. Has that been your home forever? And what's some landmarks around there that people might know? Uh, okay, well, uh, Pittsburgh is a sports town, or as a bumper sticker that's popular around here says, Pittsburgh is a drinking town with <laughs> a sports problem. Uh, so uh, depending on where your listeners are, they may know the Pittsburgh Steelers, the football team here, American football, of course, yes. or they may know the Pirates. Uh, our uh, baseball team mm -hmm. and we have a very uh, great hockey team actually as we're recording this episode they're they're on fire they're uh, doing amazingly well and um, all of those things uh, make this uh, a, a major league city if you will mm -hmm. it's the uh, city where uh, my grandparents came uh, from uh, the old Europe and the great migration uh -huh. uh, at the beginning of the last century. Uh, myself, I'm, I'm a journalist originally by training. I imagine we'll talk about that. Yep. And I've, I've lived all over the country and done a lot of different things, uh, which uh, helped make me a better storyteller, I hope. Yeah, wonderful. Ab absolutely um, loving it. Um, could you uh, tell us a little bit about those times, those early days growing up? We all have at least one fond memory. You, you touch base on your, your grandparents. I'm wondering if there's any fond fond stories memory stories that you could bring up for us well certainly uh as i said uh, my grandparents on both sides of the family were the product of uh, uh the immigrant experience so mm -hmm. a lot of my, my youth was filled with eastern european uh, rituals around uh, major holidays uh and christian holidays for sure the families mm -hmm. were, were catholic and it always involved food Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, pierogies, galumki, um, all kinds of Eastern European delicacies. I'm hungry uh, already. <laughs> there you go. See, it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. And uh, both of my, my grandmothers were, were wonderful uh, uh, ladies, very, very strong of character. I really learned a lot from them. And uh, yeah, they were a big part of my formative experience growing up. You know what, you've touched on a couple of things that I love to talk about, the formative experience and the fact that you're exposed to certain people that in your earlier years helped to form you into the man that you've become today. Who else would have been uh, around at that time? Any uh, other figures? Well, certainly my dad, the whole concept of being a storyteller, uh, the, the, he's, he's uh, passed eight, eight years now, but one of the things that uh, I inherited or uh, all of his writings and records. And he was kind of the family archivist 
And it's amazing. Uh, I have videotapes, audio tapes. I have a memoir of his World War II experiences that was probably 90 plus percent complete uh, when he wrote it. Of course, it, it, it was literally written before the internet, Rick. And so uh, he, he, he finished the manuscript but continued to collect material. And one of my projects I'm working on now that I, I got my book done is integrating all of the things that he learned after he kind of air quotes finished the original manuscript into the manuscript because it's it's uh, really quite a story he was a flyer in the second world war and a prisoner of war as he used to say a guest of the Fuhrer <laughs> after bailing out of his uh his burning b-17 right. uh, and it's that's the taproot right there my dad is a heck was a heck of a storyteller and uh you know i think uh, i inherited those genes for sure it's a fascinating but yet dark period of time that I think that we must um, remember and tell stories about, um, regardless of how hard it was, don't we? Do you, do you agree with that? I, I agree 100%, Rick. I was uh, speaking with a, a gentleman from the UK uh, a bit earlier today, and I was talking about being involved <clears throat> with the association that uh, commemorates my dad's bomb group, and one of the projects we have underway in the UK is uh, trying to build a museum on his uh, uh, old airfield, which was actually the uh, first airfield uh, where American uh, planes uh, uh, flew uh, to bomb uh, oh, Nazi wow. held uh, Europe. And also uh, the airfield where the last planes that flew over Nazi Germany uh, took off from. So it's got a bit of a historical significance there. Absolutely. And uh, we're working to preserve that. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for sharing. Um, they're obviously uh, uh, valuable stories that mean a lot to you, and uh, certainly uh, the audience would take a, a lot away from it. Thank you again. Now, uh, on that, we have uh, entrepreneurs, startup business owners and the likes, and they take a lot from people who are running businesses themselves because some of them don't know what to do and others want uh, you know, some more advice along the way. I'm wondering if we could talk a little bit about uh, you know, your daily um, work routines. What does it look like for you? Are you an early riser? What's your routine? Well, uh, Rick, you and I are both uh, dog lovers. I have a dog that gets me up at the crack of dawn, <laughs> desiring to be fed. Uh -huh. And I also ha have a cat. Cats, you know, what's that saying? I'm not, I don't know if you have, have this in, uh, uh, in your part of the world. Uh, dogs have owners and cats have staff. So we also have a cat. <laughs> And the cat lets the dog do the dirty work to get get me up uh, <laughs> early. I, I'm I'm actually pretty flexible in, in, in my daily schedule. You know, growing up in the news business, uh, I think you can acquire, and I have suffered from this over the years. I'll call it a deadline-driven psychosis. Mm. What, what that means is, and you know, in the world we live in today, unfortunately, we're all exposed to this on one level or another with everything that's going on in the world and how connected we are. Yeah. But th that, that deadline driven sort of behavior, you, you know, you lurch from one deadline uh, to the next. Uh, what that's done for me is I I've learned to wear the, the world like a, a loose garment, if you will. And uh, that that's allowed me to be very flexible. And, and really, I think, you know, for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that's a critical skill to be nimble to be adaptable, uh, to not let uh, today's setback uh, blow you off course or today's triumph uh, cause you to to hang it up and just rest on your laurels, right? Uh, and certainly that's a skill that I learned in journalism and that has continued uh, today. Our main business is uh, we're an agency, we're a storytelling agency, mm -hmm. a 21st uh, century version of a PR agency, if you if you will, yep. um, where we uh, uncover, develop, and share our clients' stories. Yeah, and fantastic. And uh, we'll take a deep dive into uh, WordWrite in a moment, uh, if you don't mind. Um, yep. Prior to that, you know, when you get some time to take a break, because I often hear stories about people who don't take a break, they're so driven that they don't think their personal health and recovery and rejuvenation is important. What would you say to them? Well, I, I would say if the last two years dealing with a global pandemic have taught us anything, it is that it is essential to take that time and, and focus on, on, on yourself. One of the things that I do 
at the beginning of every day. I, 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 I'm a daily uh, meditation practice that's critical to me. Mm-hmm. It's been very important to help me deal with the stress, particularly the last two years. Uh, I like to stay active. Yep. Um, the, the dog not only gets me up to fear, but <laughs> she demands demands a walk every day. You will take uh, me. Yeah, as well as 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 we we speak uh, today in Pittsburgh, uh, we are snow covered. Uh, the opposite, of course, of, of where you're at in, oh, yes. in, in the year. And um, it is well below freezing, and she will still want to be walked. She will still want to go for a walk. Crazy. Yeah, so that keeps me going. And I think diet and exercise are also uh, important. And, you know, it really does all start, though, with attitude, as I said a few minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, thank you very it's much, Paul. I, I, I also, when I think about diet, I also think about your mental diet. Now, um, yes. in terms of when you're burnt out, what do you do? Do you like to read or do you watch a movie or you listen to some music? Do you do a combination of those things? Uh, all of the above. I, I've also been an amateur musician over the years. Ah. Uh, something uh, that uh, most people don't know about me. I actually trained uh, to be a classical musician. Uh, for a, a while, and my instrument, my main instrument was the tuba, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which I, I still play every now and then. I'm actually on the uh, the board of a brass band here in Pittsburgh. It's the only professional uh, brass band in, in North America. And uh, yeah, so music, playing music, listening to music. I, I, I love film. Um, like many people during this pandemic, I've been a heavy consumer of Netflix and <laughs> Amazon Prime and mm-hmm. Disney Plus and and many others. And there's there's a lot of great storytelling out there. You know, one of my uh, favorites in the last couple of years was the Disney Plus Mandalorian series. Oh and yes, my now, friends absolutely now, love it. Yeah, yeah. Now we're on to Boba Fett. Boba so Fett. Yeah, it's all Boba. good. You know, Star Wars is really the epitome of storytelling, isn't it? I, I wonder, you know, who do you see up there in the top maybe three best stories that you've ever heard? Be it in movie format, book format, or other? Well, well, certainly I'd have to put the Star Wars uh, sort of anthology right there at, at the top. Mm. Uh, one of the reasons for that, and I, I read about this in the book, is that uh, George Lucas, when he was putting together the idea for the, the, the backstory, the journey that he would trace throughout uh, the film, he worked mm-hmm. with somebody that I write about in my book, Joseph Campbell, who was a world-renowned mythologist, uh, to create in film uh, or on film uh, what Campbell described as the hero's journey, which is considered by many to be the most prototypical story archetype uh, that exists. And if you think about Luke Skywalker uh, in the early films, you know, the hero is an outcast in a forgotten place. Uh, in, in Campbell's telling, there's actually 17 steps to the uh, hero's journey, but this outcast is secretly a hero and they don't know it. They meet a magic man. There's Yoda who yep. gives them some sort of magic power. And then they go on to save. Um, their civilization and become a great hero. And that's that's basically the hero's journey in a nutshell. So I have to put that uh, film anthology right at the top. But anything Disney's done, Disney yeah. is, is master. Pixar in, part, Pixar in particular, um, a company that was actually uh, started by Steve Jobs and later bought by Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, many, many folks who are prominent uh, storytellers working with companies or individuals or in popular culture uh, consider Pixar to be a touchstone. There are many tools that the Pixar team uses to create great storytelling moments. Yeah, absolutely. That's great feedback. Thank you so very much. And we're going to be um, talking about storytelling at, at the core of your business, um, which is very, very exciting because yes. I love the fact that you you, uh, you and your team would do a lot of research just naturally trying to learn about story because if we talked about the history of story we're we're going back eons in time so it's going to be very very interesting to talk about that before we do Paul I was wondering if you could just share a little bit about um, your professional background leading up to WordRight. Well for sure so uh, my parents didn't want me to be a professional tuba player (laughs) apparently they thought that the uh, the musical life was not going to 
uh, be extremely uh, beneficial financially. Mm -hmm. So I, I showed them I became a journalist, which as everybody knows <laughs> is a very, very fast growing field with a great future. <laughs> uh, being just a little bit sarcastic. Yeah. There. However, that is excellent training as a storyteller. And I spent 20 yeah. years in journalism. I did everything. I actually have a degree in broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, I that spent was at Miami? Miami of Ohio, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I spent some uh, time uh, on radio and TV here and there. But most of my work was in print. And I worked on trade magazines. I spent a lot of time working for uh, daily newspapers. And I uh, worked for wire service in Washington, D.C., of course, uh, the capital in the U.S. Um, I covered Congress. I covered the White House. I covered uh, presidential campaigns. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of great experience. I covered everything from murders to the, to the White House. And over the span of two decades, and I figured it out one time because it's important if you're, if you're, to me, if you're going to say you're a storyteller, you know, what? How are you credible in that regard? And mm. uh, from the journalistic perspective, uh, I wrote more than 10,000 stories. And as an editor, I easily edited another 10,000. So that's a lot of beginnings, middles, and ends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did not expect to get into the agency business. But uh, back when journalism was healthy, uh, you know, the way you advanced your career was you moved around a lot. I've, I had done that a fair amount. I was in Pittsburgh at the time, and I asked a friend of mine, uh, to uh, quietly help me network for something to stay in town. And um, as a funny story, actually, he ran the largest PR agency in, in Pittsburgh, and he called me up one day and said he wasn't going to help me. Uh, the paper had come out that day, so I started rifling through the paper to figure out what we'd said or done as journalists to upset this man that he wouldn't help me anymore. In a very wry sense of humor, his name was Larry Werner. And after about 10 seconds, he said, well, aren't you going to ask me why I'm not going to help you? And finally, I said, okay, Larry, I give up. Tell me why. And he said, because I want you to come work for me instead. No. Oh. And uh, that, that led me into a business I did not expect to be in. Uh, most journalists that I've met and worked with over the years don't really like people in the agency business. Uh, and that actually relates to storytelling in the sense that most journalists think that people who are in advertising or PR are false prophets, that they're telling false stories. Mm. And when I got into the business, it was with a commitment based upon all that journalistic experience that there were a lot of great stories out there that weren't being told about companies. And part of the reason why was because they really didn't understand how to tell their story. Yeah, that comes out in spades, doesn't it, a lot of times. And, um, you know, if there's one thing that I always think about with story, it's at the core of everything. It seems to me that um, different modalities come and go. Uh, you know, I, th I don't know what your opinion is of this, Paul, but, uh, you know, television seems to be falling by the wayside. The internet seems to be coming to the fore. The way we consume um, media is, is omnipresent, 24 hours a day. We're always switched on, and there's a lot of rubbish out there if you don't mind me saying uh, in terms of uh, false stories because there are there is that battle do you think and and, and how oh, do you absolutely. counter it? absolutely and this is this is right at the core of everything that we we do as a firm and a major reason why i wrote the book hmm. I, I frequently say when i speak on this topic that storytelling is the original form of human communication uh, it's the only form of effective communication that is completely portable, no batteries required, because all you need is a brain. And it <laughs> means to communicate from one brain to another. Yep. A big focus of our work and of the book is that uh, storytelling isn't, you know, BS or rubbish, it is biology. And with the advent of tools such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, uh, and other brain scanning tools, we can now see that what happens when a great story is shared is that the brain activity of the storyteller and the storyteller's audience sync up. That's In other words, it? It, it, it's as if they're dancing together yeah. and partners, and, and the storyteller is leading and the audience is right with them, moving around the floor, sharing the experience. 
this does, is critical. We, does that seem to explain why when we're seeing in a, a Star Wars movie that we don't know where we are all of a sudden? We're, absolutely. We're, we're in the moment? Absolutely. You know, there there is this a suspension of disbelief that happens when you're inside uh, a great book or mm -hmm. a play or a film or, or even an example I often use is, you know, even before television, we had this thing called radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and most of the early successful television shows, dramas, mm -hmm. were radio dramas that had been translated to television. Hey, can I add one? War, sure. War of the World. I uh, love it. 1938, yeah. Orson Welles, a seminal uh, bit of culture there. And again, suspension of disbelief. Now, today, uh, some people might brand some of the things quite legitimately <laughs> as fake news that occurred during the broadcast because people were uh they were confused and thought that what they were hearing on the radio was, was real. real yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Oh. <laughs> go ahead no the point there is really though that you know you don't need to have a television screen or a smartphone screen in front of you mm. for your brain to take in a story and become part of the story and in the 21st century rick that's why storytelling is so crucial because there's been research done that shows that we make sense of everything that happens to us through narrative. And if I may, I'll give you just a quick example. Yes, absolutely. There was a research study done a few years ago, the focus of which was, can our brains handle all this information that's coming at us through social media and all these other inputs? So what the researchers did is they wired up people's brains and they took that creative side of the brain, which they thought that wasn't, wasn't that important. And that was the control side of the brain, because what they were worried about was the analytical side of our brains, the hemisphere that processes information. So what they found was quite surprising. They wired up hundreds of subjects and they subjected them to all kinds of overwhelming information. And in every case inside the cranium of every person, they saw the same pattern emerge. Overwhelming information comes in. The logical side of the brain can't handle it. The brains of these subjects sent that information to the creative storytelling side of the brain uh -huh. and then back to the analytical side of the brain. And then people were able to understand. Wow. Everything that the subjects were experiencing when they spoke to the scientists conducting the experiment was relayed back to them in the form of stories. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? You know, you can't you can't deny the science, can you? You know, left brain, right brain, hemisphere. Exactly. It, it, we're alive and ticking. <laughs> that's for sure. And that's soon. right. You and know, I, and, I, I yeah. wonder, um, Paul, it, where was the genesis of your wonderful book? And tell us a little bit about it. Oh well, thank you. Uh, so the, the book takes its genesis from the work that we've been doing with clients. I, I'm, not, I'm not a contrarian, but, you know, a lot of times people who come up with ideas find themselves up against the conventional wisdom. And we've developed a trademark uh, process called story crafting, in which we uncover, develop, and then share what we call your capital S story. Yes. And again, back to, to journalism in the old days, when people read these things called newspapers, I would often say that today's story is tomorrow's birdcage liner. Well, that's not the way people consume news anymore. You know, they're swiping on Twitter or whatever yep. else they're doing. But the point is the same. We're storytelling creatures, but most of the stories that we tell all day long are important in the moment and then forgotten. But your capital S story answers these critical questions. Why somebody would buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you. And if you're an entrepreneur or a leader in an organization, that is the most critical story you need to share. It's the one that describes the very character and nature of your organization. And so our work has been focused on helping organizations uncover, develop, and share that story by using the science and the cultural uh, amalgamation of work from Campbell, and Carl Jung and many others, because our brains are, are not only hardwired for stories, we tell the same stories over and over again. Campbell and the Hero's Journey, one of the reasons he wrote that book 
and developed that theory is because his study of world religions led him to this amazing conclusion. Regardless of time, economic attainment, culture, language spoken, human beings around the world, we tell the same stories over and over again. So our work is around identifying from the 12 most common archetypal story families, mm -hmm. of which there are hundreds of subsidiary archetypes. For your company, what archetype describes what you're doing? And then we align that with the specifics of the organization to create their unique story, a story that's unique, compelling, and memorable, that engages the audiences that they need to reach. If they're a nonprofit, it might be donors or volunteers. Obviously, if it's a for-profit company, they're looking for clients or customers. And certainly every organization today is looking for talent. So that's a, your, your, your capitalist story is critically important to attracting the right kind of people who want to be on your team. So is this a, a book that's designed for business owners or who is your audience yes. here? Absolutely. The, the book is designed for business owners, business leaders, really. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the business leaders that I've worked with over the years, nearly all, frankly, mm. have mm. this immense passion for what they do. Yeah. It's what gets them up every day. It's what causes them to go back to work every day. They are on a mission to do something really amazing. Unfortunately, a lot of times they're not able to convey that passion in a way that gets people who, that they need to have on their team, customers, staff, whatever, who may not share their same personality, may not have the same skills, may not understand their solution or their product at the same level uh, of depth, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where the story comes in, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I wonder, did you find it challenging to write this book or was it just, just or did it flow? Well, uh, it, it flowed and it was challenging. Mm -hmm. As a writer by training, you know, we have this, this saying in the States uh, that, you know, our own company, we're like the shoemaker's kids, which is to say that the shoemaker is busy making shoes for everybody else and their own family goes wanting. So, uh, our firm's been in business for 20 years, and it took me about six years to write the book around serving wow. clients and growing the firm. Uh, when I had the time to sit down and do the writing, it was quite enjoyable. And, quite and, enjoyable. And I, I must get my hands on this book. I, I'm, I love storytelling. I'm, I'm certainly going to reach out and uh, get myself a copy. Now, uh, if we move our focus over, Paul, to WordWrite, um, yes. tell us a little bit about the services that uh, you have there. I know, for example, right now, given the nature of the world we live in, the, uh, the pandemic that we're living through, there's lots of stories going out there. And I, I see one of them there is crisis communication. Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Well, absolutely. Well, our firm does a lot of uh, crisis communication work and uh, we'll be speaking uh, next week uh, at a university here on this very topic. Mm -hmm. You know, your story is no more important than when you're in a crisis. Yeah. I said earlier that your capitalist story describes the very character and nature of your organization. And if you as an organization have not done a good job communicating that story before you're in a crisis, the way social media and the internet works these days, you're going to suffer immensely. Um, we, we talk at our firm frequently that, you know, you need to share your story. You're putting deposits in what we call the bank of goodwill, right? And the bank of goodwill is the impression in the audiences that you need to reach, investors, customers, employees, that leaves them with a good feeling about who you are yeah. and understanding that they know what you do. Yeah. So that when something unusual happens, people may be shocked, they may be surprised, but the next thing they're going to think is, what do I know about this company? How do I feel about this company? This is a bad thing that, that either happened to them or that they did. How am I going to evaluate that? And if you haven't shared your story, they have less information to go on. A quick story on that. A few years ago, we worked with a very large company. Uh, when I first met with them, they were proud that they didn't really have much of an internet presence. Mm -hmm. Construction company. Mm -hmm. And then they set a major bridge on fire. 
in a downtown of a city. What do you think the first 50 results on the Google uh, search <laughs> results were after that? Yeah, they they went from having no presence to having 100% bad presence because they never bothered to share their story. It took them a couple of years to dig out from that. Yeah, well, the, and you can see the power of story coming through here. There, there are, in actual fact, given that we're at the pointy end of the call, Paul, um, there are what, at least six other uh, categories that we could talk about. But what, what I would invite people to do is certainly reach out to, to Paul and your team uh, after this. And if we could momentarily, Paul, is introduce your team. Absolutely. So we have a core team of really uh, great people um, with, you know, the, the it was my firm. So my spouse, uh, Brenda actually works in the firm. She handles our uh, finances and, uh, and HR, a partner, uh, a, a great guy called, uh, Jeremy church. And he's been with us for 10 years. And, uh, like me, uh, Jeremy is a former journalist. And so we bring that, uh, to the team. Our, our director of content, Dan Stefano is also a former journalist and, and Dan is, a critical member of the team when we're working on our uh, capital S story crafting process uh, with our clients. Uh, we also have uh, great leaders who manage our client relationships. Erin uh, Hogan has been with us for six years. She's our director of client services and, you know, um, social media, which we talked about a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, electronic and digital communication is critical. And we have a great lady named Kira Coscom who uh, is our digital and inbound marketing director. And she's really fantastic at helping people get their stories out there and all the environments that people turn to uh, these days. And then we have great people on the team who are content creators and digital yep. specialists. Uh, we have a young man named uh, Trey Adams. Uh, he had a call yesterday with uh, someone at TikTok. So, I mean, oh, we have a client wow. that needs to be on TikTok to there you tell go. their story. Wonderful. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you again for sharing. This has been absolutely a wonderful call. I, I wonder, given that uh, storytelling is global, universal, if you like, uh, and where is your audience uh, located? Who, where are your clients generally? Generally, our clients are in North America. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that the pandemic has changed for us, uh, really, Rick, is that you know we, we're beginning to look now uh, beyond uh, and and and. I'm, started talking you know i mentioned i spoke with somebody earlier today uh in in, in europe and uh so really it's global as you global. mentioned uh storytelling is a global phenomenon uh, the pandemic there's a lot of things that cause people pause in our specific case one of the good things is uh, if you don't have to be there in person anymore mm -hmm. and you do the kind of work we do then you can do it for anybody in the world really yeah, that's great news for anybody who's on the show today or looking for some help um, becoming a better storyteller. Now, if somebody does want to reach out to you, Paul, where are they going to find you? I'm going to give you two URLs. Uh, one is www.capitalsstory.com. Mm -hmm. If you go there, that'll take you to a landing page on our website, and you'll be able to learn all about the book and our process. The agency's uh, address on the internet is word like you speak write like what you do with a pen mm -hmm. pr.com word write pr.com that's too easy to remember i'll be making sure to put those links on the post if you are listening into this call you want some help to become uh, better at storytelling and we can all learn a little, little bit more there are, there's certainly a lot to learn that we've not spoken about today I know that's for sure and certain. Um, Paul and his team at WordWrite are certainly people you need to make contact with and we'll go from there. When you're uh, on, on, the, on the path to uh, starting to tell stories, make sure you go to wordwritepr.com. Again, I'll make those links available to uh, you if you're interested. Paul, what a wonderful call. I've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you so much, Rick. It's been a pleasure to be on with you today. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.